An alternative to the monolithic kernel would be the microkernel. So the microkernel is much smaller. And what it mostly consists of is interprocess communication. And then what you would have is services that communicate via IPC with other services, possibly. So the hope is the kernel can be very fast and reliable as long as they get fast interprocess communication. And that would allow the VM to talk to the file system, file system to talk to processes, processes to talk to files, and also allow user programs to communicate as well. Conceptually, the user program is communicating with the file system. The way it actually does it is by communicating with the microkernel. The microkernel will then uh, allow the communication out to the file system. So we have to use the IPC to arrange communication between the user program and the file system. These services are smaller and uh, easier to replace and customize, is the thought. So an example of this type of a kernel is Mach. This was developed in the 90s at Carnegie Mellon University, was used as the basis for Next's operating system in the 90s, which eventually became Mac OS, Mac OS X, when Apple acquired Next. And so today, in fact, the Mac OS is built on top of this microkernel approach. JOS is sort of like a microkernel and sort of like an exokernel. So uh, we're going to look at that difference in a moment. All right, so what have we learned from microkernels? It's possible to make interprocess communication very, very fast. Also, if you have separate services, it actually requires kernel developers to think more about modularity, right? And make sure we have separate modular bounds. And also, good IPC is really good if you have new user level services. For instance, if you have an uh, X server so that you can run X applications, uh, that really uh, deals well if you have fast IPC. What do we need to know? So the kernel can't be super tiny. We still need to have some idea of processes and some idea of memory, right? Some idea of processes because these separate services are actually processes. Some idea of memory because we need to have something that's in charge of allocating this memory. And sometimes it's hard to split the kernel into lots of processes. Okay. Because it also makes it hard to do cross-process optimization. So sometimes what happens, and this is really more what has happened in the Mac OS, is we have our Mac OS with mock at the bottom, and then one very large service on top of it, which is BSD, the Unix. Okay. So we really sort of have a monolithic kernel on top of a microkernel and don't have separate don't have separate services in this particular uh, part of the kernel. There are some other services, I believe, that Mac OS has as well. But in, in, some, in some sense, it is, it is not truly a, using a microkernel well. On OS X, these uh, ideas of services can be used, but not for the traditional kernel services, mostly for other services that get, that get added on. And they do actually, these non-kernel services are served well by having fast IPC.